Welcome to today's Reflection from Christchurch. Last Saturday, we helped run the Detonate Light Party with some 160 children from years one to six. We had a great time with worship, games, craft, and the usual Detonate special. Leaders getting shaving foam pies in their face if they couldn't answer impossible questions. And no, I couldn't answer them. But amongst all that, we also had some very clear Bible teaching. Looking at the fear the disciples felt when they were crossing the Sea of Galilee with Jesus asleep in the boat, and when a great storm blew up. You can read it in Matthew 8. And how they, and we, need to trust Jesus in the storms of our lives. Children and, and leaders were asked what they were afraid of. It will be little surprise to learn that most of the year two and three children had no fear of anything, except perhaps mum or dad being cross with them. And there was a song that we sang, I Am Not Afraid or Not Afraid, which had the chorus lyrics, I'm not afraid of the dark, the dark's afraid of me. I'm not afraid because your heart is shining bright in me. Be bold, be strong, be brave, hold on. I'm not afraid anymore. Your love glows in the dark. The interesting, interesting thing about that song, though, is the conversation I then had with one of the young boys who was there and who challenged the idea that, that the dark could be afraid. It's quite right, of course. So we had a discussion about how the dark represented someone who wanted to do harm to him. At which point his friend said, you mean like the devil? Those two 10 year olds were very clear on the truth that Jesus was there to protect them. And they understood that they didn't need to be afraid. In our lives, we often don't understand why things happen especially bad things, the believers. We often can be afraid, afraid of the unknown, afraid of things that may never happen, afraid of things that are very real and are happening in our lives. But the truth that those boys understood is a truth for us also. We need not be afraid because we can trust that Jesus is there with us, that he cares for us. Yes, bad things will still happen, but God will give us the strength to hold on. We just need to trust, to be brave, to hold on. It isn't always easy. Yes, the, the words are easy to say, but the reality can be pretty harsh. Yet as we call out to him, our Lord hears and cares and responds. Sometimes it does take a while before we can see a bigger picture. Let me share a personal story from way back in 1981. We were living in Geneva, and two days before Christmas, I had a very tender swelling in my neck. So I went to the doctor, and two days before Christmas, mind, he said, it could be cancer, come back in 10 days. I have to say that that was not the best bedside manner I've ever come across. Well... I did go back, and it turned out to be an easily treatable sinus infection. But his words and methods had really upset me, and for months afterwards I kept imagining I was ill, and kept feeling guilty because I couldn't let go of the fear, even though I knew Jesus and his love. And this was still going on when we moved to Cambridge later that year, and to a wonderful church in Great Shelford, a, a church which had a healing prayer ministry at the end of every Sunday evening service. I went forward for prayer, still under this black cloud, and it was immediately lifted, and lifted totally. Then, as I walked back down, to the aisle, down the aisle to my seat, I saw a couple I vaguely knew crying. The husband had just been diagnosed with the illness that I had feared, and because I'd thought and anguished so much about it, I was able to relate to him and support him in a way that would otherwise have been impossible. 
Only then did I recognize the purpose of what I'd been through, something that had pushed me to trust, that had given me the tools to listen and care in a way that I would not otherwise have had. I'm not saying that that is always the reason for suffering, but I do believe that in all cases, God is reminding us, encouraging us to trust him absolutely. I believe the truth of Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. One day we will understand it all. But until that day, we must just trust. Earlier this week, I was listening to Chris Hoy talking about how, as he was going through his chemotherapy treatment, knowing that the session would last two hours, he faced it by taking it one minute at a time. We can use a similar technique, but we also have a key additional comfort. We can know that Christ is with us each minute, each two-hour session, more than that each moment of our lives. Finally, if you look at US coinage, you see the phrase, in God we trust. It was originally used on coins during the American Civil War, and this was later adopted as the official motto of the United States in 1956. The meaning of, in God we trust, denoting that the political and economic prosperity of the nation is in God's hands. In God we trust means far more to us than political and economic prosperity. It means a life without fear. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your love and care for us. Help us, Lord, to trust you at all times and in all places. When the sun shines, when the darkness falls, help us never to be afraid. And Lord, where we see people struggling, give us the words and wisdom to help and to comfort in your holy name. Amen. The song I've chosen is that children's song we sang at the light party, Not Afraid by Rend Collective. Have a great day. God bless.